Hi everyone, Namaskar. This is Dr. Bani Kant. Welcome to my health channel. With onset of monsoon and the rise in humidity and temperature, there has been a sharp increase in cases of uh, mosquito borne infections like dengue, chikungunya, uh, malaria, viral encephalitis, etc. So today I'm going to talk about one of the fearsome and currently prevalent uh, infection that is dengue fever. Dengue, which is also commonly pronounced as dengue, is a mosquito borne viral infection caused by dengue virus. Dengue fever occurs most commonly in tropical and subtropical countries like India, which has hot and humid climate. According to WHO, the World Health Organization, 50 to 100 million dengue infections occur annually in more than 100 endemic countries worldwide. As per the data from Ministry of Health Government of India, last year in 2016, there were about 1,29,000 dengue cases and 245 deaths. This year alone, the number of dengue cases has uh, already crossed more than 37,000. For the first time in 1906, it was confirmed that dengue is transmitted by Aedes mosquito. So that's about almost 111 years ago. But still there are a lot of myths and misconceptions surrounding dengue fever among public. So today I'm going to bust some of those and present you the fact. Dengue fever is caused by dengue virus, which is a single-stranded RNA virus. It's about 50 nanometer in size. There are five strains or serotypes of this virus. Dengue virus is transmitted by female Aedes mosquito and in India, Aedes aegypti is the main factor. They typically bite during early morning and in the evening. It lays its eggs in artificial water collections like flower pots, coolers, buckets, uh, toilet tanks, discarded tires, etc. And the adult mosquito emerges in seven days. The average lifespan of Aedes aegypti is about four weeks, but the eggs can remain viable in dry condition for more than a year and emerges uh, within 24 hours once it comes in contact with water. Well, the virus doesn't seem to have any harmful effect on the mosquito. The mosquito simply carries the virus and transmits to us. Now let's see how this uh, dengue virus works inside our body. When a mosquito carrying a dengue virus bites a person, it enters our body through the skin with the mosquito saliva and it enters the WBC that is the white blood cells and reproduces inside it. The WBCs respond by producing cytokines and interferons which in turn produce symptoms like fever and severe pains. There is also infection of stromal cells of bone marrow which lead to reduction of number of platelets and this increases the risk of bleeding as platelets are necessary for blood clotting. Now I'm going to tell you the clinical presentation of dengue fever. In 80% of cases, people infected with dengue virus are asymptomatic or have only mild symptoms like fever, while others have more serious illness. The incubation period of dengue virus is 3 to 14 days, but more commonly it's 4 to 7 days. It is the time between exposure to dengue virus and onset of symptoms. The characteristic symptoms are high grade fever, headache, pain behind the eyes, rashes, muscle and joint pains. That is why dengue fever is also known as breakbone fever. These symptoms usually last for 2 to 7 days. In about 5% of dengue cases, the disease proceeds to a severe dengue, dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome. The fluid leaks from bloodstream through small blood vessels, as a result of which less blood circulates in blood vessels and the blood pressure becomes so low that it cannot supply sufficient blood to vital organs like heart, brain, lungs, liver, etc. In these conditions, patients enter a critical phase where there is accumulation of fluid in chest and abdominal cavity, respiratory distress, organ dysfunction and failure, and severe bleeding. This occur more commonly in children and young adults. Now let's come to the diagnosis part. The initial diagnosis can be made clinically on the basis of symptoms and physical examination. The early changes detectable in blood tests are low white blood cell counts followed by low platelet counts and metabolic acidosis. Diagnosis of dengue fever can be confirmed by the following test. 1. Dengue NS1 antigen test. 2. Viral nucleic acid detection by the PCR that is polymerase chain reaction. 3. Anti-dengue IgM and IgG test. 4. 
virus isolation in cell cultures. As there is this all famous saying that prevention is better than cure. So what can we do to prevent dengue viral infection? First, personal protection from mosquito bites by wearing long sleep clothing which covers the skin fully. Use of mosquito nets, screens in windows and doors, application of mosquito repellents, insecticide aerosol products, etc. Secondly, controlling of Aedes aegypti mosquitoes by eliminating its habitats and breeding grounds. That is getting rid of open sources of water and use of insecticides. Some vaccines for dengue fever has been produced but it's not being widely used at present. Well, now let's come to treatment part. Our treatment of dengue fever is mainly supportive and symptom management. There is no any specific antiviral drug for dengue fever. Patients should seek medical advice by visiting a, a doctor and hospital. They are advised to take proper rest and drink plenty of water. Cold sponging can be done for fever and paracetamol can be taken to bring down the high temperature and to reduce the joint pains. But remember that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen should be avoided because they can increase the risk of bleeding. Well, severe dengue may need intravenous fluid administration and blood transfusion. But most of the patients who do not have any warning signs can be managed at home. Your doctor is the best person to decide whether a patient needs admission or not. So please do not insist your doctor for admission because most of the government hospitals are overcrowded and Seriously ill patients suffer because of the overcrowded stable patients. Well, there is this growing rumor and belief that dengue can be cured by papaya leaves and goat milk. And I heard that goat milk is selling for more than 2000 rupees per liter, which is to sell for 35 to 40 rupees per liter. I have seen and read some articles which mention that papaya leaves helps to improve the platelet count, but it's nowhere close to cure of dengue. Well, I cannot find any scientific proof about its efficacy. So a lot of scientific research and trials need to be done for reaching to a conclusion. So please consult your doctor and seek medical advice before it's too late. Thank you for watching this video. Please do subscribe and share. Wish you all good health. See you again. Jai Hind.